Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host, and I'm pleased to welcome back Glenn Taylor from the Super Yacht Charities. How are you? I'm great, Ria. Thanks for having me back again. Well, you look much better this time around, a little bit. You're not winded this time. No, I guess it's nice to have a, uh, a temperature, uh, a shower, a normal temperature as opposed to a cold one, um, asleep a, a in my own bed. Um, all those luxuries that uh, I didn't really get over the last uh, 48 hours. So uh, I'm feeling slightly more awake, albeit with some uh, bruised toes and a, a few more blisters than I'd like to have woken up with. Well, I can imagine it's not something that you're used to doing on a regular basis. Um, I can imagine your body definitely is aching in places where it never would have ached before. Yeah, it's, and it's something I don't want to get used to doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exercise is one thing. Doing uh, that much exercise in, uh, in that shorter period of time overnight. Yeah, that's not for me. I think I'd like to think it's a one off. Was this your idea? Yeah, painfully it was. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was something we spoke about probably a year ago. Um, but at that time, balls and parties and all that sort of stuff was an easier way of making money. So um, I uh, it kind of it was it was kind of kept on the back burner. And then, uh, yeah, things changed. The world changed. Covid yeah. came in and we had to think differently. And uh, yeah, it worked out really well. And given what's you know, potentially happening in, happening in the UK at the moment, I think maybe we nipped it in just in time. Uh, because I think give it a couple of weeks, we probably wouldn't have been able to run this event. Uh, it wouldn't have been seen as a safe, safe event to run. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's worked out really well. And, you know, the key to this is, is to be a catalyst for, for further, you know, similar events. So, yeah. Well, I have to say Jim Marine did do an amazing job at helping with the social distancing, because in watching um, as you guys were participating, you had Perspex, I think it was, between, you know, people uh, on, on the cycles and stuff. Yeah, they were incredible, uh, and we, we all had to get behind that, right? You know, it had to be a safe event. We, we, we were on webcam, you know, the whole time. Um, we had perspex between the two pieces of equipment that were close, in close proximity. We had tape on the floor uh, to, to delineate where the two meter line was. We had sanitizer on the way in. We only allowed six people in the building at the same time. Um, you know, it really was, it was a very safe, very well run event. You know, even the meal afterwards, you know, had to be sat in groups of six. Um, you know, even when we crossed the finish line, we were in bubbles of six. So we were very careful. You know, it had to be it had to be done in a proper way because because of what's going on in the, in the world at the moment. But uh, Ed and Zoe and Megan, Jim Marine, you know, they were unbelievable. They got behind this from the first minute, um, and uh, and they stayed behind it the whole way. You know, Ed, you know, Ed was there at three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. On, on Saturday, he didn't need to be. You know, he's he's got his dog and his you know, wife to be at home. He didn't need to be there, but he came in. He took the water outside. He replaced it with ice. Gave us all Lucas aids. His energy and he pumped the music up. Um, you know, he brought an energy to the team that was, uh, I think, really required at four or five o'clock in the morning. Well, yeah, I, I know that feeling because I actually woke up at four a.m. in order to interview you at um, five. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. You got you got me through the first 20 minutes, even though I had a very sore arm. I don't know whether you realized during that interview that I had to hold my phone with my hand the whole time. So Yes, you did tell me. You did tell me. Uh... <laughs> try to pedal and not breathe too uh, kind of forcefully and hold a phone. Uh, men aren't very good at multitasking, Ria, but, uh, you know, we, we tried. Well, you proved you proved that theory wrong because you did very, very good job, a very good job. <laughs> So for those out there that have been living under a rock and have no idea what we're talking about, it is the Seven Seas Challenge. You were biking, rowing, and swimming. No, biking, rowing, and running, sorry. Um, thinking of a triathlon here. Uh, from where to where? So we went from Southampton, from St. Yeah. Mary Stadium, which is where Southampton Football Club play, which is where we normally host our, our spring ball. Uh, and where hopefully, all being well, we'll be hosting our spring ball next year. Uh, and we went across to the Can Eduardo restaurant in Palma de Mallorca, which is where we typically host our seafarer's supper. Uh, and the distance between those two is, I think, 1,211 miles or somewhere around 1,900, uh, sorry, 1,121 miles, 1,900 kilometers. Um, and yeah, we, we rowed, we rowed, a, like physically rowing, uh, we rowed a bike and, uh, and we ran. And uh, 
We did it in the, uh, we tried to do that in exactly the right amount that covered the amount of water that were between the, the areas as well. So we, we did it all properly. So how long, I mean, originally you had an idea in your head of how long it was going to take, but you actually did it quicker than you thought it would take you. We did. And uh, thanks to the adrenaline, really. So initially we, we worked out kind of the average speed. Uh, people would run at kind of 10 kilometers an hour and row at 12 kilometers an hour. Um, so we kind of looked at what was typical for a broad range of fitness levels. And that brought us in at about 32 hours. That was the, uh, that was the budgeted time, which meant starting at 10 o'clock uh, and finishing at six o'clock the following evening. We actually did it uh, in 30 hours and 14 minutes. So about an hour and 45 ahead of schedule, um, which was great because it meant those guys that were supposed to be going across, you know, going out at five o'clock at night, they missed their sessions. So they were deliriously happy with that because they were not in the for one more hour of running or rowing or whatever it was going to be. I can imagine. I can imagine. What was your, I mean, after you guys were finished, you all went for dinner. Yeah, it was quite quiet. <laughs> um, we, uh, we were pretty tired. I mean, so we, 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 we had a really good finish. So um, we had three miles to go uh, and uh, it was supposed to be my turn to run. And I thought, you know, we, we kind of came as a team. We should finish as a team. So we split that 0.75 miles yeah, four ways. Um, so we all ran around one of the nicest areas of Bath, the Royal Crescent. Uh, we created a finish line. We had chariots of fire on um, and four of us crossed the finish line all together. So that was that was a real boost to finish in a kind of a, in a team fashion. Um, and then we had the dinner. We had a few drinks and then we had the dinner. But that was people were, you know, you know, when people are really tired, when you leave a restaurant and no one really talks about going anywhere else. They just all headed to the hotel. It was uh, it wasn't really a topic of conversation about having a party. We were we were shattered. Well, I can imagine after all that exercise, not getting much sleep and a couple of drinks would have been a recipe for sleep. Yeah, it was. And, uh, and we got as much sleep as we could. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? This doesn't stop. Now, actually, I didn't even ask you how much money was raised. So at the moment, we haven't stopped. So that, that's one of the big things is, you know, we're going to leave it open for another week or so. You know, some people have come to us and they said, look, you know, can we can we make some uh, make a donation on payday and that's great you know we'll keep it open till the end of the month um, we want to capture everyone but at the moment we're at fourteen thousand and fifty eight pound um against a target of eight thousand so you know we can't you know underestimate how overwhelmed we are uh, at how much money has been raised from this it's a great reaction we've had uh, from you know friends and family and and, and and corporates out there that have really supported this event and they they continue to do so during the event so um you know keep keep it coming if we can get fourteen and a half thousand pounds it sets a, it sets a good challenge out there for anyone else well and the fact is this challenge does continue on you guys were just setting the benchmark you were just showing everybody how it should be done or at least how they should model how it should be done and there is a challenge out there for people to take this challenge on and do it themselves. Absolutely. You know, now's the time to press the multiply button. You know, we've we've done the event. Uh, we've created the kind of the principles behind it. We've showed people how it's done. You know, we can give them the templates. You know, we've, we've got the template there for a safe, you know, seven seas challenge. Now what we want people to do is, is get off their backsides and um, train, get a little bit fitter, be, be fitter for it. And, and go and raise some money. You know, people don't have to go and raise 14 and a half thousand pounds. But what we want people to do is to raise as much money as they can uh, at the ball next year, at the, the spring ball, assuming it happens, which we hope it will. We will have a, a prize for the, the team that are quickest, um, which will be the Young Bucks on a, on a yacht crew. We know that. Um, but we'll also have a bigger prize for the team that raises the most money. Because ultimately, that's what it's about. You know, there's no individual glory in this um you know if there was we would have been phoning around local athletes to try and help us do this in 22 hours but that wasn't what it was about it was about team spirit uh, and it was about raising money and uh, we really want you know we've already had some interest from, from certain companies out there to to say they're gonna you know potentially get behind this so just we've got to keep pushing that if you're on a yacht you're doing a crossing you don't have owners on board you've got a couple of days spare drunk you know, beyond your limits already, just give us a shout. We'll tell you how it was done. We'll give you the rotor. You can plug it in and off you go. 
Well, and realistically, most yacht crew themselves are in pretty darn good shape. They have to be by nature of the job that they do. So for them to take this challenge on should be pretty easy because, I mean, especially when you're talking about a busy charter season, the fact is they're surviving on three hours sleep a night anyway. Exactly. I mean, you know, one of the guys on our team, well, I mean, we had a few yachties on our team, but one of the guys is a um, is an officer on a, on a big yacht. Uh, he, he coped with the sleep deprivation better than anyone because, you know, his watches, he said, you know, I'm on a three hour watch. It's fine for me. Yeah. Uh, whereas the rest of us that are used to seven hours in bed and the comfy bed and the, you know warm shower in the morning, yeah, we struggled a little bit more. So these yachties, they've got no excuse. You know, they've they've got the time, they've got the fitness levels, they've got the contacts. Hopefully to sponsor them, and hopefully some owners will get behind this because that's a really quick way of raising lots of money. Um, you know, it's a repeatable model. All it takes is a little bit of um, get up and go. Don't want to drive it, and and we're there to support it. You know, we want to help people do this. It's the logistics behind it with a tricky bit, putting the rotor together. But we've got a model now, so you know we can help. Well, you know what? And I would love to interview anybody as well that wants to take on the challenge and talk about why and uh, get them on air and give them a little bit of publicity and you know hopefully help them raise a bit of money too. No, absolutely, and, and please do that. I mean, Ed, and I don't know whether you remember, but Ed Thomas made a very generous uh, offer as well. Um, he will donate a hundred pounds uh, for every person that takes this challenge on. So, I mean, that's a hugely generous offer uh, from, from Ed. And, you know, that's a great kickstart. If you put a team of 12 in, that's, uh, that's a real great kickstart from, from Jim Marine. So, um, sure. yeah, I'm sure that's on the back of them taking some equipment from Jim Marine. Quite rightly, it should be. Um, but, um, you know, let's, let's get behind it. There's a lot of, I mean, you know, never more so than now, there's a lot of charities out there that are crying out for these sort of funds. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of us are in fortunate positions where we have paid jobs. Um, you know, we've got a bit of security behind us and there's a lot of people that don't have that. And, you know, I feel like it's our, you know, it's our moral obligation to, to try and help. And that's what we're doing. Well, I think this whole situation has really shown. I mean, I know even with the audit that gives back and talking to Nick that, you know, during the regular year and in and, and normal times, you know, there was about 500 people in Palma, Mallorca, um, that would utilize the food bank. And I think the number sort of spiraled up to something like 5,000 per day that needed the food bank with the loss of jobs and the situation. Um, and it just goes to show that there's a lot of people out there that, that are pretty much hand to mouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's scary. It really is scary. And I think until you do things like this, you don't realize the difference you can make. Uh, and we can all we can all kind of walk around with our eyes closed and think, yeah, but, you know, 10 pounds is not going to make a difference. Lots of 10 pounds and lots of 20 pounds really do make a difference. Um, and, and really, it's just a bit of effort. And, you know, that was one of the things I said to all my team at the start of this year was this is this is just an effort thing. All, all I'm asking from everyone is is just a bit of effort and a bit of your time. The rest I can organize, but I need you. I need resource and I need a smile. Because, you know, we need a smile to do that sort of event. It's, it's, it's painful. Probably easier to do it on a yacht, you know, another intensive, yeah. right? Because you've got your cabin, you know, 15 meters away. Um, True enough. So you can literally do your exercise, jump into your cabin, get back up again. Much easier than having to go back to a hotel and fill in spreadsheets all night long. <laughs> oh, it was so much rougher for you, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with your age whatsoever. No, Ria, we're not mentioning it. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> I'm not a 20 year old deckhand, I know that. <laughs> well, you know what? I think that everybody. Now, when is the spring ball normally? Like, we've got about six months here then that we, we have, you know, for other people to take on the challenge. Yeah, literally. Um, I think the date's uh, it's at the end of March. Okay. Um, so we've literally got about six months to go. So there's plenty of time for people to get behind this. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd love for, uh, you know, 10, 15 companies straight yachts to, to take this on. Um, it would be a great, it would be a great thing to do. Um, it really would replace the funds that we've missed out on this year. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, it's important for super yacht charities to keep pushing ahead with things like this. So, yeah. Well, yeah. it's leading by example, isn't it? And, uh, you know, the fact is yachting by its very nature is, um, sort of looked up to and, and it's, utilized by the higher echelon of society and when leaders tend to do something like this and show others it's, it's a great way to sort of start that give back straight throughout society as a whole yeah yeah it just needs it just needs a bit of motivation a little bit of hunger a bit of desire and and that's it right 
There's no point. Well, and I think Yachty's, they're, they're pretty, they like to compete against one another. So I, I think once we start getting one or two yachts getting on the game, I'm sure that we're going to see many more jumping on board. I hope so. That's, and that's the idea of this, right? We want to create competitive spirit. Yeah. Um, you know, biggest fundraiser, fastest time. And deep down, right, we know the yacht crew, what they're really angling for is the fastest time. Because that's, yes. that's the kudos, right? That's the kind of, you know, ultimate male, ultimate female competition. But with that, it's going to come sponsorship. And, uh, you know, fastest time, if you, if you raise 25 pounds and have the fastest time, you get a prize. But if, if you do it in 45 hours and raise the most amount, you're going to get a bigger prize. And, uh, and that's the key. You know, all of that money will go to these, to these you know, valuable causes. Well, and we've got a list and we'll make sure that we provide a list of those charities uh, underneath this interview as well. If you want to donate, we'll provide those links. And if you want to um, jump on board and do your part, we're going to make sure that you have all of that available to you underneath this interview. Glenn, I thank you ever so much for your time. And I thank you for inviting Yachting International Radio to be part of that process over the weekend. Um, we did enjoy watching you suffer. It's been a real pleasure. You've put a you've put a smile on our face, and you know it's uh, it's, it's been uh, it's been nice to have to think. You know what? In four hours' time, I need to try and look a slightly fresh face for a uh, for a radio interview. I've always thought I've had a face for radio, but I didn't expect to be seen as well. So um, <laughs> you know, it's been good, and thank you for getting behind it, Ria. It's uh, yeah, it's really good. And if you can help push that message out there for us, that would be fab. Of course, I'm here always, and and you know, whenever I see somebody a little bit of suffering. It, it helps. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm kidding. <laughs> we know in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Glenn, thank you so much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, Seven Seas Challenge, head on over, do your part to support it. If you want to compete against another yacht, we, I think it would be great for you to sort of offer up a challenge to those that are parked next to you. Um, it, it could prove very, very interesting. You've got six months to get this done. Let's see what we can do to raise a whole pile of money for these four absolutely amazing charities. And once again, thank you ever so much to Jim Marine for all that they have done um, and all that they are pledging to do in the future. You have been watching another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I've been your host. Tune in again for another episode. <laughs>